Theodore Roosevelt was the 26th president of the United States. He served from 1901 to 1909 as part of the Republican Party following McKinley's assassination. As a leader of the progressive era, his issues were most prominently conservation, breaking of trust, regulation of railroads, and general fairness towards the average citizen. He won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1906 from his efforts to broker the end of the Russo-Japanese War. The majority of his executive orders were used to protect the forests and wildlife of the states. Under his presidency, he established the United States Forest Service as well as the creation of five national parks, 18 U.S. national monuments, 51 bird reserves, and 150 national forests. Located on the Potomac River across from the GW Memorial Parkway, Theodore Roosevelt Island, which was previously Mason's Island, was transformed into a living monument in honor of our 26th president. The island was originally inhabited by natural Chichank Indians in 1668. The island was then acquired, most likely taken, by George Mason in 1724. It was in the hands of the Mason family up until 1913, where it then became the property of the Washington Gas and Light Company. This land was also illegally used for chemical warfare testing, such as bombs, landmines, and dynamite. In 1931, the Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Association purchased the island from the gas company in hopes of construction a memorial on the island in honor of Roosevelt. Within the island itself, the memorial is a sanctuary within the trees and natural landscape of the terrain. When the viewer enters the monument, they see a circular clearing with bridges, fountains, monoliths, and most obviously, the statue of Theodore Roosevelt himself. He is depicted with his hand up, which is how he would typically give speeches. Surrounding the back of the statue, there are four monoliths, which are titled Manhood, Nature, the State, and Youth. First, the youth reads, I want to see you game boys. I want to see you brave and manly, and I also want to see you gentle and tender. Be practical as well as generous in your ideals. Keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. Courage, hard work, self-mastery, and intelligent effort are all essential to successful life. Character in the long run is the decisive factor in the life of an individual and of nations alike. A man's usefulness depends on his living up to his ideals in so far as he can. The monolith of manhood reads, It is hard to fail, but it is worse never to have tried to succeed. All daring and courage, all iron endurance of misfortune make for a finer, nobler type of manhood. Only those are fit to live who do not fear to die, and none are fit to die who have shrunk from the joy of life and the duty of life. The state reads, Ours is a government of liberty, by, through, and under the law. A great democracy must be progressive or it will soon cease to be great or a democracy. Aggressive fighting for the right is the noblest sport the world affords. In popular government results, worthwhile can only be achieved by men who combine worthy ideals with practical good sense. If I must choose between righteousness and peace, I choose righteousness. Finally, nature reads, There is delight in the hardy life of the open. There are no words that can tell the hidden spirit of the wilderness, that can reveal its mystery, its melancholy, and its charm. The nation behaves well if it treats the natural resources as assets which it must turn over to the next generation increased and not impaired in value. Conservation means development as much as it does protection. All of the monoliths are quotes by Theodore Roosevelt reflecting his thoughts on the subjects. He uses manhood and youth statues to inspire the people as well as the nature monolith to convince people that it is their responsibility to conserve nature just as he did, so that it will be in its best state possible as well as viable to pass on to future generations.
The island is a monument unlike any other. It is a visual, tactile, kinesthetic, and auditory experience. Visitors can participate in safaris around the island to interact and learn about the natural wildlife. Numerous paths around Roosevelt Island make for at least a couple hours of entertainment through a peaceful walk through the lush swamp. The island itself is a metaphor for Roosevelt's influence on conservation. Placed at the center of such a habitable green piece of natural land is Roosevelt, standing at equal height with the trees, backed by his most important ideas of his presidency, reflecting the way that him and his ideals advocated for the protection of the environment. The monument appeals to Logos by providing information throughout the island about the wildlife, facts about them, and Roosevelt's correlation to their conservation. It appeals to pathos by surrounding the viewer with nature, which can be overwhelming, as well as a peaceful place to sit and reflect on their own thoughts on the monument, seeing firsthand how much of the natural world can be taken care of through his influence just by sitting on the island is very awe-inspiring and affects emotions entirely. Finally, the large statue, inspiring quotes, and signs reflecting Roosevelt's work in the conservation build up his credibility exponentially. Well, he's a big Teddy Roosevelt. You are too. I am too. Um, I think he's the last great Republican president we had. Um, I really think he did a lot to conserve this country's natural treasures and. We're big National Park fans. We love the National Park. So why did you guys choose to come to this monument today? We came more for the nature than the history, really, just to yeah. find a nice nature walk. And we were looking for some place um, flat in particular. Overall, Theodore Roosevelt Island is a wonderful place with such a powerful and overwhelming message about the importance of conserving nature. Spending just a few hours on the island greatly impacted both mine and my group's thinking of the environment. Getting out of the city, laying on a bridge by the marsh and listening to the sounds, observing the wildlife, and just reflecting on the monument was a wonderful experience that many others should be able to enjoy.